that's uh, Thursday, July 19th at the top of the hour. So we'll get started here. We're going to do an overview of the ICC Digital Codes Premium Platform. Uh, should take only about 30, 35 minutes. So we'll leave questions open at the end. Um, feel free to post them in the chat as we're going along here. And as I mentioned, Abby from ICC, if uh, she sees some interesting questions posed during a specific spot I'm at, she'll go ahead and interrupt me. Other than that, I'll make sure I'll check the chat and circle around to answer all the questions uh, during the meeting as well. All right, so Digital Codes Premium is ICC's uh, platform that uh, have, that contains all the, the digital codes and standards. We have currently over 1,400 different titles on there with our premium complete. Um, and when you're signed in as a premium uh, license uh, holder, you're able to access all these different features that we'll go through and are kind of summarized here. Uh, but the ability to be able to uh, bookmarks, make notes, collaborate, highlight, uh, access to being able to copy and paste, uh, and all these great features that allow content search and, you know, easily able to access any of the content that you are looking for in the codes and standards on our platform. Uh, if you haven't joined um, the 14-day free trial, you see that note that we have right there. Um, I encourage you to do that. It is truly free. There's no credit card needed, no, no catches on it. Just allows you to be able to access that for two weeks, the, the digital complete and, and kind of see where uh, the platform uh, can help you in your workday and, you know, how we're moving beyond just accessing building codes and standards in printed materials and PDFs. And uh, with Digital Codes Premium, which you may hear me refer to as DCP for now, um, we've moved past those limitations of uh, having content on, uh, on paper or PDFs. And now people on your team or organization are able to access these codes wherever they're at, uh, wherever they have access to a web browser. We also have a uh, mobile app that is also free that during your free trial, you can download and try that out as well, too, where you could download titles and be able to access them even if you do not have an internet connection so i'd mentioned that digital codes premium is the name of the platform so premium isn't necessarily any of the types of licenses any of these licenses you see here have those premium features so singles uh, example that would be like the international building code um, and the International Building Code is part of the I-Code collections, uh, that next two-diamond level that you see there. And the three-diamond level, the Digital Codes Premium Complete, uh, will have all the content that we have available within that subscription, which would include, you know, as I mentioned there, the, uh, the singles in the I-Code collections. Um, we have uh, state-specific codes uh, for some of the states that have worked with ICC to produce their amended codes, uh, along with access to content from uh, many of these uh, uh, standard development organizations. You can see the logos on here. And um, during the free trial, you are able to, you know, go through and view uh, most of these without having a license. So feel free to explore those and see, you know, how wide uh, the uh, the offerings on our platform can be that would allow you to access all these codes and standards. Um, the pricing for singles and collections does vary uh, upon the the actual titles or collections that you do choose. I will mention, though, that as you start to combine multiple singles or collections, it does uh, kind of add up to what you see for the price of a, a single premium complete license there in the middle. And when we go and on our website, we have pricing calculators, uh, but there are uh, three different discounts available. If you're logged in as a um, ICC member, having an active membership, you'll be able to see that pricing right on the uh, on the, on the pricing calculator on the website and there's also uh, discounts for uh, quantities and you know, basically we try to do this at these lower numbers so it's easier to get started with it and then there is also finally a instead of an annual plan there is a three-year plan uh, which adds uh, additional savings 
Uh, you may see on our website, we do advertise the, the use of our licenses for, um, call it premium for teams. There's actually two different ways you can do that. Uh, the licenses I just mentioned in the, the slides before uh, can be shared licenses. You can either assign those licenses to individuals for a dedicated license, or you can put those in a group and have multiple people share access in there. Only limitation being the number of people who can simultaneously be in that group sharing would be limited by the number of actual licenses that you have acquired. Uh, for larger organizations, uh, we do also have something that's called the, the DCP Enterprise Platform. It adds a, a, a few more administrative uh, um, functions in there where you're able to upload uh, list, uh, you know, an Excel file of names and email address so people can be deployed very quickly. You can see user activity. Uh, the difference between a DCP Enterprise seat and a license is that these enterprise seats are dedicated and they can't be shared. So that would be for people who have an organization that would need to have uh, dedicated access for the people that are looking to uh, access the codes there. What I'll now do is go to our main website. And what you will see here is where the codes reside at codes.iccsafe.org. So it's a, a slightly different website than our ICC Safe or other ICC websites you may be familiar with, but the login here is a uh, single sign-on. So any, if you already have an ICC account, you can log in with this. If you do the free trial, you're going to um, create an account and be able to access as well there too. Um, we do offer some of the titles in a free basic view you may already be aware of. Uh, for example, the I codes, uh, you could access those and you could review the code sections and be able to scroll through and, and see the different um, code content in there without having a license, but you don't have the abilities and the features that we're going to go over here uh, when you are logged in and you see the digital codes premium logo there has opened that up. So if I just uh, were to start off here, let's start off with the I codes. Uh, as I open this up from the main page, this is presenting all the different titles in the I code collection. Uh, first thing I'll point out here is that having this all digitized makes it easy for us, the ICC, to include previous cycles. So if you have to refer back to a um, cycle that's uh, not the current one, you do have the ability to go back and sort by there. And as you see the titles presented there in that book cover format, I'll open up the IRC. And what we have here, um, what I'll show you is this is uh, indicating the title that you have opened up. If this is something that you frequently access, you can fill in that orange heart there and it will appear as a favorite in your dashboard. And I was talking about how digital codes is able to present Previous cycles uh, using 218 IRC, for an example, as you can see, there were five versions of this. So instead of in the past where you may have just acquired the 2018 IRC and got the first version and then had to work through however you update that content on Digital Codes Premium, you will always have the most up-to-date information. We'll always present that most recent version to you. If you need to refer, you can go back there. But uh, it's kind of nice that you do not have to do any manual or paper updates to your code sections. Uh, it is all available right here and automatically uploaded when those become available. So on the left-hand side, we have the normal table of contents where you're able to go through and you can expand out the different chapters with sections and view the code sections. So if I dive into just this section here, um, what we'll notice as we come into the top of the section, uh, you'll see all the different code sections and subsections. And actually, as I'm scrolling through, here's an example of what it would look like if you, you had created one of your notes or your, as I mentioned, if you're in a shared group and you're collaborating with notes where other people may have made notes. So those will always appear right there. What I'll also point out is you see this blue type and what that will indicate, um, and if you ever want to reference the legend information here, it's right above the table of contents. But for example, as we're looking through uh, the IRC, that blue text will indicate that there was a change in that code section from the previous cycle. So it'll easily point out any changes that were made. 
Uh, as mentioned, we also have um, amended state codes. For example, in California, they just started their new code cycle. And if we open up one of those titles, you'll see some of the, the text passages will be in red text, which would indicate a um, state amendment that would be different from the model codes, uh, the I codes that you're seeing. And then there are some cities that uh, in local city or local county amendments that uh, may be made in those titles that we have available as well too. While I'm here, I'll just point out these uh, other items in the legend. Um, you know, you may see symbols that point out uh, deleted sections or anything else that you may see and want a little reference to. These four icons are part of the, the features I mentioned at the beginning here, and I'll go through those at, on a code section. And then there are icons at the tops of certain code sections. So I'll just review these real quick and then give you an example as I come across them during the presentation. Uh, that ES, that green rectangle there, indicates that there are evaluation services report, you know, any products that would per, uh, relate to that particular code section. If there's been an uh, uh, ICC evaluation report done on it, it will show that PDF and um, show the, the report for that. Errata, kind of self-explanatory, any errata in that section, it'll show you and summarize. Um, I'll, let me jump down to the CDP. That is the code development process. So as changes are being proposed by people in the industry to the current cycle of the I codes, those will be there. You can read the proposal, the proponents, uh, cost, impacts, everything there uh, to see what may change in the next cycle. And then going to that premium P there in the orange or gold, that's going to be um, many different types of supplemental content that's available, as you see, as the significant changes, code interpretations. There's also, for example, I'd mentioned the code development process. There's hearing videos there. So if you want to see each of those proposals being um, uh, presented, uh, there are videos for that as well here, too. So as mentioned, there is an example of a note that was made at that particular section. Let me scroll down a little bit further to another one and create a, a new note. So what you're seeing here, call this tic-tac-toe board, the waffle, uh, this will bring out those icons that I, I pointed out in the legend information. These are the ones that aren't available in the basic view. You need to have a premium subscription for it. I guess maybe the first thing I'll point out that uh, people enjoy having is the fact I just highlighted that. And if I wanted to now copy and paste this into you know, a Word document that you're, you're writing a letter for, an email, you're able to, it opens up the copy and paste uh, functionality so you can copy and paste that into a document. Um, as I'll leave this highlighted as I'm going through these icons because these first two icons, the first one is a highlight and the second one is a bookmark. Both of these will open up this same text dialog box. So what this will do is this will attach any note, custom note that you want to create related to that code section. And as you can see, it's got a pretty strong text editor where you could underline, bold, um, create bulleted list, even add media here as well too. And whatever you want to write in there that will appear in that code section will be retained. Then you can also assign a project tag. What this will allow you to do is uh, create and organize um, a method for, for your notes. If you're in a shared group where people, you know, multiple people are in there creating notes, any project tag that someone else would create would create would be available here to choose. If you want to create a new tag, uh, you are able to, you know, create that here. And you got infinite colors here where you can choose from um, to go ahead and, and highlight that. And since I did leave this highlighted, let me choose a lighter color and select that. And if I save it, what you see is it um, had automatically, well, let me go over here and just show you that. It did move it down a little bit because I highlighted so much there. And as you can see, it shows the highlighted text there. If the notes, you want to collapse them as you're uh, viewing them, you can do that. As mentioned, that might have been too dark of a color to highlight with, but as you can see there, it does retain that highlight because I highlighted that section first and then chose the highlight icon. If I would have just chose the bookmark, as, as you see, it opens up the same um, note dialog box. It just will not leave this 
highlighted um, if you save it in that manner. Third icon over here is a share link. And I've seen um, different jurisdictions be real happy with this because instead of you know people coming into the office and either they're showing their ripped up copy of the IRC or making photocopies of it, they can now share the exact code um, section that they're referencing. If you use this email editor, it does come from ICC support, just to let you know if they're not expecting a, an email from, from ICC, you can just copy that URL. And as you see, it's copied to your clipboard, and then you can use your own email to send that out. But what this will do is, you know, you see up in the address bar, it has that URL up there. It will send that exact URL to the to your recipient. And if they click on it, they will automatically open up in our free view um, this code section number right here where you're at. Now, they obviously won't see any of your notes. Those are, are private to your own uh, license or your own group. But what it does do is give you the ability to share that code information with people outside your, you know, your organization. And it takes them right to the code you're referencing. And, you know, they're able to scroll through and, and read any other related code sections uh, in, that, in that content as well, too. Final icon over here is the print icon. If I select that, let me go back. I was, let me select something that has a subsection under it. Because it does give you the ability to print. It just you obviously can't print the entire chapter or um you know tech, the entire uh, book but you can print sections with subsections so as you see this since there was an uh, it did have a subsection under it gave me the option to print with subsection instead of just going straight to print so if i select that obviously the first thing you can do with it as you format it you can send it to the printer um, some people still have a desire to retain pdf copies of some of this content and what you could do with this and you know i have adobe it opened up in adobe so i could download this and save it right to uh, the desktop and that would allow you to mark it up and save it as well too so you do have two options there let me go back to the code sections i see questions being posted in the chat i hear if someone doesn't have sound can i get a confirmation that people can still hear me Or Abby, if you're listening, I'd hate to have had to. Okay, thank you for the confirmations. All right, someone's speakers aren't working, so thank you for confirming. All right, so going back, um, let me complete where I was at with the notes and the other things you can do with that. So uh, here I am in the IRC, and any note that was created, um, like I said, if you have an individual license that you created or if you're in a group, other people have created as well, it will keep track of all the notes that are in here. So I could, you know, jump right to that one. It's a hyperlink, jump right to this one. As you go forward and maybe have hundreds of different notes and you want to organize them by that project tag, you could select that. Then it would only show the notes that are from that project tag. So you can, you know, really narrow down if you're looking for specific notes within that content. Let me just step over here for a second to finish the comments on the notes because this is a real powerful feature here so this is kind of like an administrative screen for the the notes and bookmarks when we use the word my notes that would be you know any note that you created whether it be a highlight or a bookmark so every title that i have created a note would be listed in here if you wanted to jump right to that note once again this is hyperlinked it does show you it would go right to that code section it does show you any of the notes that were created there it tells you who created it and any types of the demo tags and when it was created you have the ability to print notes if you want to take them to the in the field or, or whatever may be uh, your desire you can select individual notes from across different titles and they would you can come up here and generate a pdf and it would you know generates it in a nice format has all that information with your notes. If you're sharing it with anyone, they can see that it's coming from the ICC, the authoritative source on there too. The other thing that is going to be really powerful is we go back down to my IBC. When 2024 comes out for the IRC, all the notes, you know, hundreds, what do we say, thousands, 
I can now migrate those to the next cycle. So you, there's no pulling out your old sticky notes or recopying margin notes. Every note that would be in 2021 IRC, and you know, you can select them all. If you need to do individually, you can. We can now transfer those into the 2024 cycle when those are released. If you select move all, it would delete them from the 2021 and just move them into the 2024. The other option is to keep them in 2021 and then you just clone them and you can move them into the 2024 IRC. Uh, the system is intelligent enough to know that if the code section number has changed slightly, it knows where to attach them so your notes will appear exactly where you expected them to appear as well. All right, going back through here, um, I think as, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is a web-based product uh, software. So all the functionality that you're used to using a regular web browser um, are, are still going to be here. Obviously, it's not attached to any specific piece of hardware or a network drive. You can access it wherever you have access to a web browser. And with a web, you know, same kind of features as a regular web browser, we offer this quick view just by hovering over it so you can see where it might be taking you. Then if you want to open it in a new tab to avoid having to go back and forth, you're able to do that. So it would be, you know, located right here or actually in the next one, move my browser around because I got my WebEx stuff blocking it. And then if you wanted to open in a new window, you got two monitors, slide it over to the other monitor or resize your windows here and you can view that content side by side. All right, going back to the main page, um, I will go through all these different categories here and kind of give you an overview of what uh, the content is, but let me just first show you the search capabilities. Um, always use uh, means of egress because I think everyone guesses that's going to give you a, a large number of returns. So what this did is it searched across my entire uh, um, library. I have complete, as you can see listed here, of 1,400 titles. So wherever it found that phrase, it brings back 31, there are almost 32,000 results. Obviously a bigger search than you would normally do. And I will mention that if you are already inside a title, like I showed you the IRC, it would just search with the, within that one title for um, when you do a search. So it would narrow down that way. But just to kind of show you how you can narrow down your search and uh, the order that we present it, I'll leave it here for now. Uh, probably the first thing you'd be interested in is the type of categories. Uh, I'll select iCodes. So it'll just look through all the cycles of the different I, of the of the of the i codes and there's 1500 results if you wanted to be more specific and as we said you know search just california or through any of the other florida states you could do that and then usually the next thing that people would be interested in for narrowing it down would be the year so i'll select just the 2021 i codes and now i'm down to just over 600 results if i want to go right into a specific title like the IRC, you could select that there as well too. All those options get narrowed down as you as you go down the categories. You can also search directly if you're looking for figures, tables, equations as well too, and it will just return those types of results. So if I go back up here, I have my 613 results all over the 2021 iCodes. This we call a breadcrumb trail. And if you're just doing a quick overview, you can see, okay, this is coming from the IEBC, this one's from the IBC, this one's from the IFC. So it kind of gives you an overview of uh, where those where that phrase is, is contained within the, the I codes. So you can go in right at the top of the title, top of the chapter, top of the section or the subsection, and it opens up in a new window. Um, so it, it saves your original search results. As I'm here, I noticed a couple of our CD of our icons here. So let me just pull those up. Um, if I hover over there, uh, there was a change to that specific uh, re, uh, propose, proposal for that specific code section. As you can see, asking to, you know, revising it, you know, detailed in the outline, the reason and the cost impact. Next to it then would be an example of additional premium material. Here we go. The revision history that opens up in a new tab. You can see what the that history was and then the hearing videos. 
Not that I would play this whole thing, but just to show you, some people are really interested. Calling G15 with more testimony and support. Dale Biggers representing Geo Coalition. Within the code changes, and that would allow you to view the, the, the hearings that were done. And uh, those just happened this year. So whatever proposals were voted on a change, you'll see in the 2024 cycle be revised. All right. If this is a search you use frequently, you can save it and it goes to your dashboard. Let me clear the search here and show you the advanced term search. So what you can do here is enter, you know, looking for an exact phrase. You're probably familiar with searching by using, you know, all the words, any or none of the words. Uh, you can enter those in there. Uh, use this example with egress again. This is called a near term search. So if I were to enter in two terms and then do that advanced term search with those two terms, this is looking for where egress and basement are found within 50 words of each other in a code section. So once again, you got the 423, uh, you can narrow it down to the categories, everything I was showing you in a previous screen. But once again, you can jump right into uh, wherever it's being referenced there and you can do the search that way. Check the chats, uh, see if anyone's here. Does ICC codes new premium Revit add on subscription base too? Does it look similar? Uh, to your presentation. So yes, we just released that uh, last month. Um, what the add-on will allow is for you to open that right through the, the Revit application. And it will you're able to access the codes if you're putting notes in there. You can copy and paste it so it is right um, within uh, your Revit application so you don't have to have multiple windows open. Everything else still works and as I'm showing you here, so you would have that access. And Abby, I see you can't, you couldn't unmute yourself. I apologize. I'll, I'll keep checking chat and I'll circle back at the end here. <clears throat> All right, so I covered the I codes. Let me go through this in order with the standards being next. This will list all the standards that are, are referenced in, in, in the I codes. Now, some of them may have a link to the explanation uh, some of them may go to the actual source. It depends on the type of licensing agreements that we have with those organizations. Uh, I'll mention a couple quick things here. Um, the ASHRAE standard, uh, we do have available on our platform, but it comes as a standalone, um, either in our energy collection or you can buy individual titles. So that is an extra charge. That's an example of something that's not included in our uh, Digital Codes Premium Complete. Uh, but then there's other standards uh let me take astm which was a, a big request as i mentioned we keep adding more and more content to complete at, at no extra charges where we can astm was just brought in over the summer here and as you notice uh, over on the side this is going to have all the astm standards that were referenced across the 2021 i codes and as i open this up here's an example with the way astm licensed their content you can see that red circle icon there which is a pdf so in this case this view only functionality doesn't allow you to copy and paste or make the notes but as you can see the standard multiple pages in there in its entirety that you can access so once again all these other standards here um, you can check on those if you get the uh, free trial, you're able to go through and view what is contained and types of uh, access that you have on it. And you can go through those for that, like I said, that two week on a free trial. The locations, for example, I'll take California. They just uh, started their new code cycle. So here's an example, California, New York, Florida, you know, uh, uh, maybe about half the other states, I'm guessing, have contracted back with the ICC to produce their amended code. So if I were to open this up, this is another example where it is available in that free basic view. And once again, you can see the links there, just scrolling through, see if I'm in any red areas. We have... I always forget where all those changes are. But any of the titles, any of the text that would be in red would be a change from the model code. So. One last time, and then I'll stop making everyone dizzy. All right. 
any of the amended checks would be in there in red. Going back to the the, the main uh, title page here or the web page, commentaries. Uh, those are an uh, example of a collection, but they are included in complete. And if I open up commentaries, once again, you can filter those by year. And the nice thing about the way we present the uh, commentary is, as you can see here, it's code and commentary. So if I select a code section, uh, let me start by hiding the commentary. If you're familiar you know, with the code and just want to scroll through without seeing all the commentary, you can do that. This will look and feel just like the 2021 IRC. But then when I open up the show commentary, you see how this expands out and what that includes. Let me find it. There it is. So any of the commentary sections would have that diamond in front of it. Um, this is kind of handy here where this is not available in the free view. So if you're dealing with homeowners, uh, they wouldn't be able to view any links from here unless if they, they had a DCP license. But, you know, our, our copyright agreement allows you in that, in that focused instance, if you want to copy this as an explanation to that code section, it is opened up and you're able to do that. Once again, hide and show commentary is a nice feature that you have in there as well, too. Resource sections, <clears throat> probably the most accessed ones here, the revision history, the significant changes. Um, for those of you who are taking certification exams, over the summer we also added uh, the study companions and flashcards. Let me pull these up for a second. Um, these are kind of neat where as you're going through with the questions, and the definitions, if I select answer, it gives you the answer. And then if you want to, it will link right out to that to, to show you where that uh, answer came from. So kind of cool. That's in the, the resources over here. Other topical areas, um, structural design, we'll go to like the, the SEAC uh, uh, manuals and other related topics. So that's just a way to organize and present that. Different publishers that may be available on there. There's SEAC again. And then finally, the collections. Um, if you open this up, it does show all the different types of collections that we have. As I mentioned, the premium complete, if you're using multiple singles or collections, will definitely be your best value. So take a look at that first, but you are welcome as you order your licenses to include um, you know, singles or collections, whatever works best for your objectives. All right, let me show you the mobile app here first. This is down on the same web page. And as I mentioned before, if you are doing the free trial, you do have an active license. So you could get the free app as well and see how that works for you. It has the same look and feel. It's a very robust app. So kind of nice. There's the iPad, the iPhone. It does kind of present the same layout that I was showing you on our, on our web browser version software. Uh, the added features you have with this though too is if you want to use the app on your phone or ipad uh, you can still access it through the app rather than the web browser and what you can do if you're in the app while you're attached to wi-fi is you can download up to 15 titles in there now 15 is just the limit uh, that the app uh, allows at one time you can always delete and change, you know, add a, add a different one if you're accessing uh, different content at different times during the during the year. But if you have absolutely no internet connection, you lose the ability to view and make notes, but you will still have the ability to open up one of your titles and go through the code sections and be able to show it to, you know, whomever you're talking to, even if you do not have Wi-Fi uh, nor data connection. So that is available on there as well, too. All right, going through check and chat messages, I kind of covered everything over here that I wanted to do, and I always do like to leave enough um, opportunities for questions. And question I have here is uh, when making notes in premium, if we have to go to basic for a while, then back to premium, will we lose the notes? No. If you're making a note in your premium subscription, you are, and, it's, and you save it, that is going to be there when you return back. If you log out, you don't lose it. When you log back in, because it was a note that you created, you will be able to um, still view that. So no, you don't lose the notes there. Answer, quick answer to that question. And I'm going to talk about how you can configure licenses. Let me just go down through the left-hand menu just to make sure I've covered everything. This section here, 
basically is a, re, a copy of what you see on the main website. They, they would go to the same, like I said, commentaries, collections, locations. Uh, premium tool, tools, my library and dashboard is, is kind of similar. Let me go to dashboard real quick. This is where I was showing you that here are the ones that we just recently viewed during the demo. If you had filled in that heart there for a favorite title, it will then show up as a favorite. And then, as I mentioned, we're always adding more content uh, whenever that becomes available. Um, recently added to whatever subscription level you have would be showed there as well, too. Project tags was, uh, we spoke about how, you know, if you wanted to organize your tags, you can go through and edit those, delete those if you wanted. My notes and bookmarks is um, what we showed earlier there and how to migrate your notes. Uh, the sharing history, and that would show, I was showing you how you could share licenses both with people outside your team and inside your team. And the license configuration I'll go through, that's actually kind of an admin board. So let me use Premium for Teams as an example. So this kind of goes back over what I was talking about where when we call it Premium for Teams, this is just an overview of how you can use the license if it's not just an individual license and you're within an organization or a department. So I had mentioned the Enterprise Seats. Um, that works perfect for people that need dedicated seats. And I think I mentioned that Price of a seat, for example, for complete is the same cost for price of one license. Um, those are the same cost uh, with seats. You can't share, but the licenses, you know, that you'd see like an IC shop. If you're going to look through this, they can be configured however you would like. So, for example, uh, let's say if you have a team of 12 people. All right, you could buy 12 licenses. And give dedicated access, you know, via an email. Uh, assignment. So when that person logs in, they have a license that's dedicated to them. They in this in this situation, it may be people who don't want to see other people's notes or don't want to share their notes. So all those notes would be private unless if they specifically shared them. Um, let's take that same example: twelve licenses for twelve people. If they don't always need dedicated access and they do want to collaborate, um, you could put that in a group. And you can take those 12 licenses and make a concurrent group, give that group a name, you distribute that name to those 12 people. And all those 12 people would be able to log in at any time because there's 12 people and 12 licenses. So there's always an available licenses uh, available. If we want to expand that out and say, okay, I got 12 licenses in there, but I want to share it with 50 people. You would still be able to do that. Once again, you got a group of 12 licenses. You would give that group code name to those 50 people and all 50 people would be able to log in and access the content. The only limitation would be that only 12 of those 50 could be in there at the same time um, because that would uh, be the number of license in total there. So you're not sharing account login information. If you see here, here's my name. Everyone creates their own login and they won't have any you know, gold diamonds here because they don't have their own license, but they are in a group. So all they would do is they could click on the concurrent access there and they would enter the group name. And then they would be able to enter in that group and be able to access the content. Uh, when they leave that group, there is a, a feature to click here to immediately release the license. If they do it that way, as soon as they leave, that spot will be open. If they just regularly sign out or go to lunch or go to a three day weekend, there, there is a safety feature that we call it a 20 minute inactivity logout. So if someone is inactive while in a group and not, you know, while they're using a license, but not active, it will automatically log them out. So they're not monopolizing it the entire day. And, um, after that 20 minutes and that license is freed up for anyone else to go back into. So that's the, the premium for teams, how we describe that. And um, if you got specific questions, uh, you know, put my name up at the end here. You can send me an email. Uh, I do demos all day long with uh, organizations and jurisdictions uh, to answer their specific objectives and, uh, you know, tailor a solution for them. So let me check the chat one last time here. 
If you buy individual titles or collections, do they link the way premium complete titles link with each other? So yes, if you're buying multiple collections, it would just show that, like if you bought IBC and IRC, they would be in your library of both IBC and IRC. And as I mentioned before, that would be previous cycles as well too. So if you're searching through your library, it would just show you those as your results. Next question, flashcards and study companions for all titles. Yes, I believe they did have those. You can access those in the uh, premium complete. I'll go back there and just check, but I believe we do have them all available. And is there a link to the ACI building code? Let me circle back to that. And someone asked what email, because I mentioned my email. I'll bring up that last title page on the PowerPoint and show that. Uh, standards, ACI, looking through here. Oh, let's use the search then. Um, I will admit that I do not have a code background. So if you ask me to go to a specific question, I'm not uh, a specific code section. I may not find it that quickly. But also this opens up a, another example here. So I use the, the search bar on the main web page, the home page there. And actually, this is a good example here. So if I just hit return, it will just search for um, that content. Or it will search for content results for ACI. If I'm looking for specific title results, I can scroll down and you can see it here. The choice is select all title results for ACI. So then it will pull up these. And like I said, I, I'm not going to dive too far into your question, but that is a way to search it. And especially if you have the digital codes uh, free trial for the complete, you'll be able to see and be able to view what else is on there as well, too. I'm going to do one more thing here. Maybe I'll drop this into the chat because everyone always asks what titles are are included here. I'm going to drop this in the chat, but this link here is a it does have a dynamic counter on it. So we are up to 1407. Um, if you wanted to, you know, once again, look through here and see what titles are available. It'll bring back those results that are incomplete. And I did mention about pre, uh, extra add-on titles that are available. These are in the bottom here. I'm going to drop this link in just a second. Um, some of the titles that, uh, due to licensing, we you know are we need to um, charge a different subscription fee for it. Ash rate, as I mentioned, is in there, but that'll allow you to see maybe that becomes a value where you can put those contents that you may be getting from somewhere else um, onto this platform here and make it easier to use. All right, entering in the digital codes website I'm on right now. While I'm here, I'll put my email address in here as well. And I will say this concludes what I wanted to present, but I will open it up for more questions to monitor it. Uh, I, I will still, still be monitored to the top of the hour if you want to stay on and listen and ask questions. I am available, but I do appreciate everyone's time um, to come to the webinar and kind of learn about how digital codes, uh, while it may be you know new to some people, everyone is is definitely at least moving into that area because of the the way that it's easy to share the content, it's easy to get the updates, and the search functionality just like I said moves you away from those limitations that you've had with paper and uh, PDF files. All right, I'll go back to the homepage. I will conclude my presentation 